Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin have long been seen as a risky investment. But in Venezuela, you can end up behind bars for dealing in it. These five people, along with thousands of others across Venezuela, are secretly mining Bitcoin just to make ends meet. Some names have been changed to protect their identities. Because in this country, dealing in Bitcoin is a very dangerous game, but also a vital lifeline for survival. Venezuela was once the richest country in South America, but now it's a country in crisis. It has the highest inflation rate in the world and its currency is in freefall. Food and basic necessities are scarce. People are rationing toothpaste and toilet paper. There's even reports of hungry Venezuelans killing flamingos and anteaters for food. The IMF reported prices in Venezuela rose 470% last year and projects more than 1,100% for this year. Against this backdrop, cash-strap locals have been turning to mining cryptocurrency just to get by. In the cryptocurrency world, mining is essentially bookkeeping for digital transactions. When someone mines, they earn digital currency as a payment for their efforts. It's been a lifeline for people like this man, who goes by the nickname Brother. He initially got into mining because his $43 a month government job wasn't enough to support the baby girl he and his wife had on the way. The 29-year-old started mining by secretly using computers in his government office and only agreed to talk to CNBC under anonymity. Brother's story is a familiar one. David Fernando Lopez has since fled Venezuela, but he once ran a Bitcoin mining farm. He was 40 years old and didn't have a job. Mining was the one thing that could take him out of poverty. You can feed a family with one either ring. It's a fact. Yeah. Uh, people are doing it. Yes, a lot of people. A lot. Of Andrea Perez works three jobs, yet mining Bitcoin represents roughly 80% of her income. For me, Bitcoin has represented the ability to be able to support and feed my daughter in a very volatile uh, environment. Venezuela's currency, the Bolivar, has lost 99% of its value in five years. But Bitcoin, Ether, and other cryptocurrencies are insulated from all that. They're fully decentralized, so they're immune to what's happening in any one country, regardless of where they're mined. And though extremely volatile, cryptos are proving to be one of the most stable things in Venezuela right now. Why are so many people in Venezuela getting into the Bitcoin mining craze right now? Because they can barely make a living with their jobs there. But if they are professional, they are not able to work. So people are finding the, that mining is a way to make uh, a predictable income for their families. Randy Brito runs the online forum Bitcoin Venezuela, teaching people how to mine. He operates remotely out of Spain, having fled Venezuela with his family when he was 14. What started as a community of 10 users has ballooned to nearly 10,000 people. Though it's a vital source of income for many, Randy says the danger of mining is becoming more acute by the day. Are people afraid that they're going to be arrested for mining Bitcoin in Venezuela? Yes, people that mine Bitcoins or cryptocurrency with mining rates, they usually do it underground or, or they, they try to hide them from public. I know that I don't have anything wrong, because the mining is not something wrong. It's only that this government is so corrupt that the people who are not allowed to get rid of it, they put things that are X to take care of their equipment, but it's not because we are doing something wrong. It's not that. And technically, they're not. Mining for cryptocurrency is completely legal in Venezuela, yet police have been arresting miners. Some say it's because the Venezuelan government views cryptos as a threat to the already weak Bolivar and to its strict rules about capital flight. It's striking rampant fear into the mining community. A Venezuelan Bitcoin miner posted this comment to Reddit. Miners are getting jailed and accused of terrorism, money laundering, computer crimes, and many other crimes. It's getting crazy here, and I really don't want to waste my life for money. A year ago, Tego Sanchez spent his life savings on mining hardware and taught himself to mine. It now accounts for 80% of his income. But the 23-year-old lives in constant fear of being caught after seeing his friends arrested in raids. 
He says that's a big reason why Venezuela's crypto community largely runs on secret groups and encrypted messaging apps like Telegram. That's also why he always uses an assumed identity. Este, no, 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 este, porque he estado, o sea, tan, tan anónimo y con respecto a todo el tema que, que no, o sea, no he tenido ningún problema hasta ahora con la seguridad de, de la nación, pues, este, ni siquiera mis amigos saben que hago esto, nada más lo hago yo y, y nadie sabe qué, qué hago, y, y como, como yo con mi abuela, es la única que sabe lo que hago, y todo esto es una locura, pero con respecto a la nación, no, la seguridad no. Mateo Patino taught himself to mine back when the economy went sideways in 2012. At the height of Bitcoin's value, he raked in up to $600 monthly, roughly three times the wage of his former job as a journalist. But now, he's facing the scrutiny of the police. Yeah, I was, I was actually approached by, by, by the authorities, by the political this year, just calling me. And they started to ask questions about, about how, why I was having so much power. Uh, from, uh, from my house. This is one way authorities track down miners. Venezuela has heavily state-subsidized electricity. That keeps the price low, which is huge because mining for cryptos takes up a whole lot of electrical power. But it also means police monitor power consumption all across the country. And when they see that somebody is using too much of it, they go after them. That's why many arrests of miners are on charges of internet fraud and electricity theft. One arrest claimed a miner was endangering the stability of the town's electrical service. When asked about the crackdown on miners, a detective from the National Police told CNBC that in many cases, suspects were exploiting resources without documentation. And it is a real concern. The country is facing a nationwide electricity crisis. It's resulted in power cuts and even a couple months stretch of mandatory two-day work weeks for public employees. That's why Brother not only protects his online identity, he also conceals his electrical footprint. He says he split his mining equipment across three different locations. He then pays neighbors to use their electricity so he can spread his devices across multiple power grids. It's all in an effort to remain as anonymous as possible. But even when you take these kinds of precautions, Mateo says mining for Bitcoin in particular is a major gamble. Mining Bitcoin became something out of a spy movie. Because miners were getting arrested on false charges, many Bitcoin miners are, are being prosecuted, and many are they're scared, they're paranoid. And, you know, the fact that in, in December 2016, uh, there were several raids across the country from the political police, the intelligence, of, uh, the intelligence uh, officers uh, here in Venezuela, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people started to get scared. Some of the miners we spoke to say it's simple. If you're too good at mining, you become the target of extortion by government officials. They say that if you don't pay up, you're rounded up in raids by the Sabine. Now that's the acronym given to the country's secret police. David ultimately had to get out of the business entirely for his own safety. It is really corrupt, so it's not. I have to show everyone that I have a big installation. Somebody's gonna try to bribe me or try to rob me. It's like. This country is like this. 99% of David's net worth is still invested in Bitcoin, but now he trades the cryptocurrency and watches as a bystander as the danger of mining grows. So you said that mining for Bitcoin makes you a honeypot for cops. Have you ever been targeted by the police? No, I've never been targeted by police, but most of them, uh, well, a lot of friends that have mining operations have been. So Venezuelans are now either going underground or entirely offline. But the fact remains that countries in deep political and economic crisis, like Venezuela, are a big reason why digital currency alternatives are so important. David says the easiest way to get basic amenities is using his crypto cash on e-commerce site purse.io. He orders staples like soap, deodorant, and shampoo, then a courier from Miami will deliver the goods right to his office. Joe Lubin is the co-founder of cryptocurrency Ethereum. He argues that in challenging conditions where natural currencies are spiraling out of control, cryptos are integral to survival. These kinds of options are uh, uh, basically a lifeline, really. Yes, they're volatile, uh, but they represent real life-saving value to many people in many countries around the world.